Aloha, Kako. Welcome, everybody, to the Hawaii Invasive Species Awareness Month presentation on It's Working, an update on little fire ant control in Nahiku. And I'm Beth. I'm with the Hawaii Invasive Species Council and the Maui Invasive Species Committee. And I'm going to be sharing a poll with those of us joining, those of you joining on the webinar on Zoom. And you guys should be seeing this right about now. And thank you for sharing a little bit of information about where you're joining from and your what you do. This really helps us with planning these Invasive Species Awareness Month talks. Awesome. Mahalo, Beth. Aloha, my kako. My name is Serena Fukushima. I'm the Public Relations and Education Specialist with the Mali Invasive Species Committee. Um, just some housekeeping with our presentation. This is in a webinar format, so you won't be able to um, turn on your mic or your camera, uh, but we do want you to participate and ask our speaker questions, um, send in your comments on the Zoom platform. We have our Q&A button on the bottom that you can click on to ask questions that we can answer live. And then we also have our chat feature. So those are the ways that you can talk with us um, and send in your questions throughout the presentation. Um, after Brooke um, presents, we'll, we'll go to a Q&A round. If you're joining us on Facebook, I see a couple people there. Hi, everybody. Um, please put in your questions in the comment box as well. And we'll be checking both of those and getting them to Brooke. Um, let's get started. We have maybe a few more seconds with the poll. If you haven't filled out the poll yet, please fill it out. This really helps us understand our audience and plan better for future high sam presentations. Looks like so far we have um, folks here from Hawaii Island, Molokai, Oahu, um, and and from outside of Hawaii in the Pacific Islands, um, from a lot of different backgrounds. So um, I think it's time, Serena. I'm going to end the poll. Sure. I'll share that with you very briefly, just in case you want to look and see where everybody else is joining from. And thank you. All right, awesome. So I'd like to introduce our speaker today, Brooke Mankin. He's been with the Maui Invasive Species Committee since 2005. He currently serves as MISC's GIS Invasive Ant Supervisor. In addition to this title, he also serves as our organization's resident cartoonist, our graphics wizard, and holder of obscure pop culture facts. Despite all these contributions, our main motivation of showing up for meetings with Brooke is to catch a glimpse of Peach, his Shisu Brijon Frise designer dog, who you can see right there as his co-presenter, and his unofficial elephant crew mascot. All joking aside, it's a pleasure that I introduce Brooke and his exciting update on the work that Misk has been doing in Molly's biggest little fire ant presentation, uh, to infestation. Take your presentation away, Brooke. Okay, thank you, Serena. All right, can we all see that? Yep. Okay, great. So this is, it's working. An update on aerial treatments of Maui's largest little fire ant infestation. Um, so, okay, little fire ants. This is what they look like up close. They're tiny little pests. I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail, but I do realize that some of you need this context. So, um, you know, they go by many common names and in Hawaii, they're called little fire ants, LFA, not little red fire ants, which people like to put in there. In Australia, they call them electric ants. It's a much better term, but uh, it's too late for rebranding in Hawaii. Uh, Serena may disagree. They are one of the world's worst invaders. They live up in trees, they sting, they rain down on people, they mess everything up. Um, so, you know, stinging sucks and they ranch pest insects and make life terrible for people in agriculture. And uh, they even sting uh, pets in the eyes. Yeah. Yep, blind pets is how terrible is that? Really bad. Um, 
Little fire ants are rotten, miserable, little aggressive, expensive ecosystem destroyers that blind your pets and don't want you to have any fun at all. If you don't believe me, call up your friends on the big island, ask them what it's like to live with little fire ants. They came from South America. They've been spreading around, around the world for a long time now. Went to Florida and from Florida, they made it to the big island um, and they were first noted there in 1999. Um, and so by 2009, they hopped the super ferry, made it over to Maui. I don't know if it was on the super ferry, but um, in 2009, since then, there have been 18 incursions to date. And these are not all equal. Some of these are big and some of these are small, but we continue to get them. And um, most likely it's coming from the big island or uh, Hawaii Island that is. And before you freak out and think that we're doomed on Maui, um, that's where we come in, the fire ant removal team. And there you can see actual footage that's um, Monty there protecting us from little fire ants. In this case, they got into some um, toxic waste and, and grew giant, but um, usually that doesn't happen. So on Maui, like I said, there are uh, 18 locations. Only seven of those, um, or se seven of those are in a monitoring phase, meaning that they are, um, we, we've been working on them, treating them, and they are, we can no longer detect little fire ants there. And so we're gonna monitor them for several years. Six of these sites are still active, meaning that we find little fire ants there and we continue to treat, survey, treat, survey, et cetera. Five of these sites, um, we are calling eradicated. And that means that um, it's been over five years since we found little fire ants there. And so um, we've checked them off the list and we no longer need to go visit these locations because they've been completely eradicated. Several of the sites that are um, in this monitoring phase are on track and or just about to turn into the eradicated phase. But one of these sites is not like the others. It's much larger. And um, this is the area that we are treating in acres. And you can see that um, there is one site, it's the Nihiku site that is far and above, much larger than any of the other next closest sites on Maui. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today is what we're doing and how we're attacking it with a helicopter and what it's looking like. So this is the infestation in 3D. You can see um, that it's a, a linear shape going down towards the ocean. And so this is what it looked like. This is what it looked like before we started. And um, what we think happened is that little fire ants were brought into a resident residence that is at the Malka or the higher elevation of the infestation um, on the bottom left of the screen there. And um, the ants then washed downstream to the ocean. It's right on um, a, a stream uh, that is perennial stream. So it flows most of the time and um, breaks into little intermittent streams down lower. There are also large patches of how um, how bush we call it in Hawaii, and it is uh, grows in an impenetrable thicket. It's nearly impossible to move through there, and so there are large sections of this area that we can't get into on the ground, and uh, that accounts for some of the gaps that you might see here in this map. Um, if you want to know more about uh, the way little fire ants move, there is a presentation tomorrow by Catherine Marlin, a uh, member of the little fire ant team, and that's at 10 a.m. It's called As the Blob Grows, and it'll be an interesting look at several of the infestations here on Maui and what they look like, their shapes look like, and um, how little fire ants move. They don't always move downstream, um, but in this situation, we believe that they did. So what do we do about this? This is a huge area. It's like 175 acres that we're trying to treat. We can't do this on the ground. The terrain is, is very extreme. This is like jungle with um, 
cliffs and rivers and dense vegetation and previously stinging ants and um, really difficult to move through and practically impossible to do on the ground like we normally do on our other sites. And sorry, I'm not going into detail about how we do our treatments and what we use and how we do our surveys. Uh, you're gonna have to watch one of my other recorded presentations to get all that information, but I think probably most of the people here watching this are interested in the results that I'm about to give you and not so much our uh, on the ground methodology, but what we did have to do is develop um, aerial methodology. And so what we did is we adapted a spray ball that we used on plants to push our ant bait, which is um, like pancake batter and contains a hormone, some, somewhat like a hormone that is an ant birth control. And so as long as we feed all of the queens, of which there are millions in this infestation, this birth control on a regular basis, they will not be able to produce offspring and eventually the entire population will collapse and die off of old age. And so um, we use that birth control because it's very low impact on the environment. And um, we put it in a bait that is attractive to ants and uh, very few other things. And so it's a fairly specific treatment to ants in general in this area. I will note that there are um, over 60 species of ants in Hawaii and none of them are native to Hawaii and nearly all of them are damaging to our environment and ecosystem. So we developed this system, we measured our spray pattern and we went to work on this infested area. This is the area that uh, we drew that we wanted to treat. It's 175 acres and we started treatment in 2019, October of 2019, this is what the raw data would look like. We have a spotter flying along with the pilot helping to direct. And um, as, he's, as the pilot presses the button for the spray to go on, the, the spotter will press the button that says spray is started. And when he stops, they stop it. And then we take this data and we break it down and you can then see where the sprays occurred and the, uh, the dashed white lines. Those are when we ferry back to refill our product and then go back down. This happened 13 times over 19 months um, for this analysis. We are, um, are continuing to treat as of today, but this is what the data looks like. This is 13 treatments. And if you tracks and you buffer them out 22 meters, which is what we measured the spray pattern to be, uh, then you can take polygons and overlay them on top of each other and create a heat map. And this is a heat map showing the number of treatments. And where you see red, there were 13 treatments over that time period. And where you see blue, there was only one treatment and there's that gradient scale in between. And you can see we got some pretty good coverage. If you look at the bottom left of the, of this map, you'll see um, sort of a bluish like keyhole out of the bottom. And that is to uh, account for a resident that wanted us to give them wide berth. And so um, you can see there were fewer treatments in that area um, just to show how this whole heat map worked. Now, in this map, I'm, I'm overlaying what we knew about this infested area before we began the aerial treatments. And so this, is, this data is a composite of several years of work, on the ground work leading up to um, when we began treatment. So it was discovered in uh, 2014 and this was about five years um, of effort in the area surveying. During that time, uh, we were concerned about little fire ants being moved by people where, uh, where people lived around houses. So there were ground treatments going on to prevent, um, to, to knock back the population in places where people are living and they might be um, moving the ants accidentally in material or in vehicles, et cetera. So we did this treatment and uh, then 
we had to go in and survey again. Like I said, this this image here is five years of, of work. And um, so we had to do our best to replicate that as quickly as possible. And so we pulled out all the stops and had all of our crews out there on the ground um, for days and days surveying. And this is the result. It's a much more thorough survey than we had in the past. And um, in fact, I have, um, just recently, crews going in and filling in some of these gaps um, that are not shown here. The blue dots mean there are no not little fire ants. The red dots are where the little fire ants were. I'll go back to this slide. So you can see that they were um, distributed throughout the treatment zone before and afterwards. Um, there are very few red dots, and I know it's a little confusing because I use the red in in heat map and as the dots, but if I take that heat map away, then you can see where those um, little fire ants were found. And only down towards the ocean in some localized areas. So this, you might look at this and say, wow, that's really good. And I would say, hey, you're right, because this is really good. We are not finding little fire ants. Um, distributed throughout the infested area as before. I was actually very surprised by this. This um, exceeded my expectations. But wait, there's more. We actually collect more information about whether that's little fire ants or not. We look at all the different ants that we're picking up. And so this is other ants that we found. There are other ants in the infested area, but very few. Most of those, the blue ones remaining, our vials, uh, samples that came back empty. There were no ants at all. And to, to me, that indicates that this is working very well. And you can see that there are surveys that are outside of our treatment zone, particularly in um, down by the ocean. There's a whole bunch of those orange dots. And there are a lot of ants outside of the treatment zone. But once you start to get into our treatment zone, there are very few ants. And uh, right here, looking at this data, just about 9% of our samples had ants at all. So that's 91% in, in this image. If I get rid of those uh, points that are outside of our treatment zone, now we're looking at just the samples that we took in our treatment zone. Over 95% of our samples had no ants, none at all. So it's working. And it's working extremely well. I had uh, Monty, my crew member from that image, uh, defending Maui from the giant ant. He went and did a special transect that ran from inside the treatment zone to outside the treatment zone. And here it is, it's closed up. And when you look at it, you can see that there are nearly zero ants inside the treatment zone. But once he gets out of that treated area, Every other vial had ants in it, and that's typically what you'll see in this area is about half of our samples coming back with ants. And so uh, this goes further to show how in our treatment zone, things are going very well. And outside, just outside that area, there are plenty of ants. These are not little fire ants. These are just ants in general. All ants are going to be affected by the bait we're, put, we're putting out if they're attracted to it. Some ants don't like the bait because they like a sweet bait, not a, a protein bait. But um, in this case, we're using a protein in our sampling process. So only ants really that are attracted to that would be detected. Um, and if you take this a step further, here's a graph. It looks a little complex, but um, on, on the left is uh, places that have been treated zero times. And um, going all the way to the right, locations that have been treated 13 times, and you can see that it drops off with the number of treatments. And this is exactly what you would expect to see. And so it's extremely encouraging results that our data reflects what we would hypothesize would happen with our treatment. So in conclusion, the uh, aerial treatment has been extremely effective. It's exceeded my expectations, and um, I'm, we are very happy with the way it's going. It's going to continue to 
to happen, we have now modified our treatment zone. I don't have a slide here for you, but we have shrunk our treatment zone down to a smaller area and can we continue to treat in that area. We will do these surveys and treat until no little fire ants are found. And um, if, if that occurs, hopefully soon, this will be the first time in the history of the world that anyone has eradicated little fire ants using a gel bait from a helicopter and of, of this magnitude. So uh, we wanna say thanks to everybody by Ant Lab, Department of Agriculture, the Hiss County of Maui has been extremely supportive of this work and hats off to the MISC crew who was out there on the ground doing this work um, for years and it's extremely laborious. And uh, that's, that's it. Got any questions? Shoot. Mahalo, Brooke. Yeah, very encouraging news and um, definitely a hands-on effort. I think, you know, our crew at one point was army crawling through how to get those surveys and samples. And so it really, um, it took a whole, whole bunch of us and a big, you know, all hands on deck effort to get these results. And it's extremely promising to see um, how far we're coming and where we're gonna go. Uh, we do have a question in the chat, I believe. I see that. Um, from Amy. So mm -hmm. can individuals use this ant bait for their properties? And uh, maybe we can ask Amy where what island she's coming from as well, which may have a different answer, but I'll let you take that one. Hawaii yes. Island. Yes, so Amy, yeah, this is um, exactly what the Hawaii Ant Lab developed for treating little fire ants on um, Hawaii Island. It's essentially, it's a vegetable oil, water, the insect growth regulator in um, Tango is what you should look for for that. Uh, we're using the same active ingredient in a different product label for the aerial treatment, but it's the same stuff. And uh, peanut butter, you can mix peanut butter in and then xanthan gum, which is a thickening agent. And it's this gel, gel bait goop that you would squirt. You can use it um, a like a little garden squirter, just uh, they call them zeps, or you can get a backpack sprayer um, to apply the bait. And what's great about it is that it sticks to the foliage because the little fire ant live all the way up in the trees. And great, uh, Beth just put in a, a link to the Hawaii Ant Lab website where they have recipes and instructional how to videos, how, how to make this bait. But um, the thing is, uh, it's when you put peanut butter in it, we're using beef liver powder for the aerial treatments, but that's a little more expensive. The peanut butter works great. Um, and works for little fire ants because they're attracted to the protein. But um, if you are trying to treat other ant species with this bait, it depends on what their preferences are. So um, for example, we have the yellow crazy ant widespread throughout Hawaii and it's a real pest and it is not really attracted to that protein bait. And so this would not be very effective at all if you were treating those ants. Yeah, thanks Brooke. And um, you know, Amy is coming from Hawaii Island where it's pretty, you know, LFA are pretty widespread, but if somebody on Maui thought that they had little fire ants, would you give the same treatment recommendations or what should they do? No, I would not. I would say, let us know and we will come out and we will thoroughly map it and we will do the treatments because the situation here on Maui is different than the Big Island. Um, on the Big Island, little fire ants are widespread and sadly people who wanna get rid of them on the Big Island are essentially carving out their little oasis from a giant sea of little fire ants and they have to just continue treating in their yards to make those places um, little fire ant free and nice to be. On Maui, we have those distinct infestations and it is our goal to completely eradicate little fire ants from Maui and we are well on the way to doing that. And when um, people are doing that on their own, we don't know about it. Um, they often, homeowners won't have the same resources that we have to throw at this problem. So we would rather have homeowners let us know and work with us and let us come and do the work in this situation on Maui. 
And then um, Amy had one more question too, is, is it better to treat trees, bushes, as opposed to grassy areas? Uh, I would recommend treating all of the areas, everything that you can hit, you know, so the ground and the bushes, it's important to do both. Great, mahalo Brooke. Uh, we have Mary Ann, she's asking, how are vials of ants or no ants collected? That's a great question. And um, I didn't go into detail about that. Um, but what we do is we have a little, uh, a vial, and this is a plastic vial and it's got a cap and you can see a little smear of peanut butter on there. And I don't know if you can see, but there's a whole bunch of ants in there and, um, they're all dead. So what we do is we put that peanut butter in the vial and we go leave it out for an hour and come back and pick it up and um, the ants are in there feeding on the peanut butter and you can put a cap on and take it back. And the thing about little fire ants is that they are so small that we have to take them back and look under a microscope to make sure that we can positively identify them. There are other tiny little orange ants in Hawaii that are commonly mistaken for little fire ants. So sometimes we come back to the vial and there are no ants in it at all. Um, and that can be for a number of reasons. It could be because you put a vial out in the middle of the sidewalk and it's scorching hot and no ants want to go into that vial. Or you have put it in a place where the ants just didn't find it. And um, maybe if you had left it for several hours longer, ants would have found it. Um, or you're putting a vial down in an area that has been treated for um, a year or longer by us, for example, and there are no ants in the area that are attracted to the peanut butter. And so that's how we get different um, results with, with the vial placement. Yep, and you can actually test for ants yourself if you, um, anywhere you are in Hawaii um, by requesting an ant collection kit. And I just dropped that in the chat on our Stop the Ant Dot or website. So whether you're on Maui or Hawaii Island or Kauai, it's always good to uh, report stinging ants and tests for ants as well. And it's a great activity that you can also do with kids, you can do with your family members, or just go out in your backyard if you're getting stung by ants. Um, also, if you're having, you know, mulch brought in or other, you know, potted plants or things like that, it's always a good preventative measure to test for ants and send them in. And Brooke and Monty will take a look um, if they're on Maui and we'll let you know. Um, any other questions we have in the Zoom? Um, folks joining us on Facebook as well, please feel free to drop a question or comment in the comment section. But last maybe few seconds to ask Brooke any questions before we sign off. Can I can I ask Brooke a question? <laughs> Thank you, sure. uh, Brooke. Can this um, particular using these helicopters to treat large areas with this birth control for little fire ant? Um, can this be done elsewhere on Maui or throughout the state? Uh, what what is how how is this going to be used elsewhere if it's so if it's being if it's found to be successful? Right, good question. Well, so um, to do the work that we're doing now we needed a special local needs permit. So right, as of right now, this work from the air can only be done in the Nihiku area on Maui. Um, and so for it to be used elsewhere in the state, uh, the same process would have to be applied. You'd have to get a special local needs permit to be able to use it elsewhere. But um, the hope is that uh, our success will be able to help that process be easier. And um, ideally, we could uh, work on getting a permit, a wider area permit um, for other agencies like ourselves to be able to use this methodology elsewhere. Of course, you can't um, necessarily fly a helicopter and spray above homes and places where a whole bunch of people are Right, so it depends on where that infestation is. If it's in a wildland area, then um, then obviously this would be the best use, the, the aerial use in those wildland areas. We have also spoken to people from Guam who are very interested in um, what we're doing. 
as they have a very similar problem with little fire ants in Guam. And so, um, you know, we've sat down and talked with them at length and hopefully they'll be able to adopt our system. This is, you know, not proprietary. We're not trying to um, keep anyone in the dark. We, we want to spread this information to everyone and help around the world anyone who is trying to get rid of little fire ants. Great, awesome. Well, if we have no other questions, I'm just dropping in the chat our next few days of uh, talks coming up and you can find that on our HiSAM website. Um, tomorrow, as Brooke mentioned, we have um, Catherine Marley or Catherine Marlin or Marley. Um, she'll be presenting on As the Blob Grows, How Little Fire Ants Move. So really interesting uh, presentation on how little fire ants can spread and how you can help stop them. Um, after that in the evening, tomorrow, we have a two-line spittle bug in Hawaii research update, which is really interesting. If you don't know what two-line spittle bug is, please check this out. Um, new, fairly new pests that um, we need to look out for, especially here on Maui. Uh, Thursday coming up is Maui Pampas work from our Pampas crew on work that we've been doing here um, on the island of Maui and East Maui. And then Friday we have Adam Knox on new detections and rapid response that MISC has been doing throughout 2021. Um, and so you can go and check that out, join the webinar. You do need to click to um, do a quick registration to come into these presentations and the link is right there in the chat. Um, otherwise, mahalo everybody for joining us, for your attention, and mahalo Brooke for presenting about the update on Little Fire Ants in Nahiku. With that, ahui ho, and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>